is here. The power of God is here to heal. Amen. Amen. I said the power of God is here to heal. Amen. So as you are hearing the word of God tonight, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is working in your body. It's working on your mind. Amen. 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 Through the instrumentality of his word. The Bible says the word of God is alive. Amen. Amen. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Hmm? Piercing to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. The joints and the marrow. Is the discerner of the intents of the heart. Amen. Amen. I think that's what somebody read this morning. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Amen. So I believe that it is God's own medical uh, or surgical instrument that cuts into every part of your body. Not just your body, but even your mind, your soul, your spirit. It cuts into it to carry out a surgical operation, to separate light from darkness, to separate health from sickness. Hallelujah. So that your life can be what it ought to be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, tonight, let's look at the book of Psalm, chapter 40. Psalm, chapter 40. You know, we've been learning about prayer. We have taught about prayer and the name of God. Prayer and forgiveness of sins. Prayer and vows. Prayer and peace of mind. Do you remember that? Yeah, we have taught about prayer. Now, tonight, I want us to look at another aspect uh, concerning prayer that we need to learn and understand properly so that our Christian lives, particularly our prayer life, might not become unnecessarily frustrated. Because a lot of people... Their prayer lives have died because they experience or they are experiencing delay in answer to their prayer, in the manifestation of the answer to their prayer. So it seems nothing is working. It seems nothing is changing. They have prayed. They have fasted. They have done everything. And yet it seems the answer the expert has not manifested. So, we need to understand what the Bible says about these things. Amen. So that the devil will not take advantage of our ignorance in that area. Praise the Lord. Psalm, of Psalm chapter 40. It's a psalm written by King David himself, the great man David, a prophet and king. I read verse 1. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Verse 2. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the merry hog, bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, but okay, let's stop there for a moment. Um, in this verse 1, you know, David was a great man, a man who prayed very much was a king, and he was also a prophet. The Spirit of God would come upon him, he would prophesy. So as he sang his songs, he sang under inspiration. And part of what he received or he spoke by inspiration of the Holy Spirit are written down for us today. And the Bible says these things are written for our admonition, for our learning. So we need to pay attention to them. Amen. Now, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited what? You see, I told you about 
um, the way the Hebrews write their words, and uh, when they want to lay emphasis on something, they will double it. For example, when you hear, I think we, I, I, I took us through the book of Isaiah chapter 26, where Isaiah said in verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace. I told you in the Hebrew, the word is repeated twice. Shalom. The word peace, shalom. That's Hebrew word for, shal for peace, shalom. So it's written as what? Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. So when it's repeated like that, it, lay, it means emphasis. Amen. So, one, so in this case, in Psalm 40, verse 1, what is actually written in the Hebrew language is, I waited, waited. Do you understand that? So, I waited, waited for the Lord. Do you understand? Which means the emphasis of David is on what? Waiting. I waited, 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 waited. Which means he said, Look, this thing didn't happen instantly. What I am celebrating in this psalm, the deliverance I am celebrating, what I am celebrating in this psalm didn't happen instantly. It didn't happen immediately. I waited, waited, waited. Waited for the Lord. You understand now. Now, but for the English, the English translators uh, will not want to translate it as I waited, waited. So they change one of the way waited into adjective. An adjective. You understand? So, or oh, should we? Is that an adjective? No, no, that's an adverb. It's an adverb qualifying a verb. So I patiently waited. Or I waited patiently. You get it now. So, now we have the word of God telling us that, look, in prayer, there is a place for patience. There's a place for what? Patience. patience. Because, see, both scripture and experience have taught us that the manifestation of answer to prayer may not always come instantly or at the time you think it should come. Hello? So the devil sometimes takes advantage of ignorance in this area and makes us to think that our prayers have not been heard by God, or nothing has nothing is happening, or maybe God has forgotten us. Amen. Or maybe our prayer, our prayer doesn't have enough uh, fire, or something like that, or the anointing of the man of God uh, who has been praying for you or been praying with you is not enough. Hallelujah. So David here says, "I waited, waited." Waited, waited, I waited. So what I am celebrating, that oh, God delivered me, brought me out, he changed my life, oh, he put a new song in my mouth, now a song of praise. Hey, brethren, I want you to know that it was not instant. I waited. There was a time of what? Waiting. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to understand something. It is a fact, a scriptural fact, that when we pray, God hears us instantly. God does not wait for your prayer to come. No. The Bible says before you pray, he heard you. While you are still talking in your prayer, he said he has answered. So God's side is already settled. Are you listening? God hears our prayer instantly. So it's not that God is going to hear you. 
God already heard you. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, David being a man not in the not of the spirit, you know, he was not David was not born again. You know, nobody was born again until Jesus died and resurrected. I've told you that already. Amen. Uh huh. They were David and other saints of the Old Testament. They were justified simply because of their faith in the promise concerning Messiah. Amen. They were justified or declared righteous by God. Amen. But they did not have the Spirit living in them. Amen. Amen. The Spirit will come upon them and live. Praise the Lord. Until the next time God wants to use them again. You understand? But for us today, the Holy Spirit lives in us permanently. Aren't you glad? I said the Spirit lives in you permanently. He lives in you permanently. No matter how you feel. You know, sometimes sometimes you feel you feel like ah, you, are, you are swimming in the presence of God. Some other time it's like everywhere is dry. But let me tell you, when you feel like the, the presence of God is thick around you, very strong, and when you don't feel anything, let me tell you, the, prince, the Holy Spirit is still inside you. Amen. Amen. It has nothing to do with your feelings. It's about His Word. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us that when we pray, God hears us instantly. There's no delay about it. So, what do we do? After we have prayed, and it seems the answer to prayer is not, is not manifesting as when we, when we desire it. What could be happening? What's the cause of the delay? Why? Even Jesus Christ, our Lord, can you imagine? So mighty and powerful. Yet, he, he said to a tree, hey, no man eat fruit from you. And it didn't happen instantly. There was a kind of <laughs> delay in the manifestation. Amen. So, we may pray, fast, do everything. And yet, it's like God didn't hear us. Now, I was talking about David. I wanted to draw a point. Now, David wasn't born again. So, that's why he said, um, he, he, he said, the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. As if it was that time, after waiting, 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 that God heard this. You see, to them, it was the manifestation that tells them that God has heard their cry. But we know better today. That is not when you see the answer to your prayer that God heard you. He heard you the very moment you prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you should go and listen to lessons from Daniel's prayer. That teaching. Lessons from Daniel's prayer. You will understand more. Or when does God answer prayer? Ah, you will understand this one more. Glory to God. So I will not want to double into that not because of our time. Hallelujah. Now, there are certain factors that might be responsible for the experience of delay. I will only mention about three or four. I will not go too much into them. I've just mentioned them. Then we look at the Bible. And, but the main thing is knowing what to do. Amen. Because sometimes these factors are intertwined. You might not know which one particularly is, is at work. Except you give yourself too much prayer. Amen. And listening to the Spirit of God. Number one. Number one factor, I'm not saying this is number one. When I say number one, I'm not saying this is the order. It's not in the particular order. You see, there are certain things we ask from God that must obey the time and season of this earth that we live in. That is, your prayer cannot make them happen at the time you want they must follow a, the time of this earth. For example, you cannot pray now and say, God. Imagine if a sister, princess, or beauty, or any of these are young ladies say, God. What's, we are in the seventh month, isn't it? And say, God, this year I want to marry, this year I want to have my child. 
Can you have Maria and have children this year? In the seventh month? You understand? Yes, you believe for it. God heard you. It's not that God didn't hear you. Oh, he heard you. Oh, God, he heard you. In fact, he has granted you. Because God does not discriminate. If you want it, you believe for it, he will give you. He said, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. And you will have it. Is that not so? Of course, he will give you. He will give you man, he will give you wedding, he will give you a baby, everything. But you know what? There's time for everything. Amen. You can't rush that one. If you try to rush it, you will have premature baby. And that will create more problem for you. Is that not so? Oh. So there is something called law of time and season on earth. And God himself does not uh, always overrule it. Sometimes he does. But not in all cases. For our own good. Praise the Lord. He said to um, Abraham, you know, at the last stage of his promise to him, he said, look, um, by this time next year, Sarah will have his child. You understand? That's in Genesis 18. So you could see, God did not say, you will have it, no, no, no. He said, by this time what? Next year. That's God. By this time next year. Even when Elisha spoke to the woman of Shunem, he said, I see you carry a baby boy by this time next year. Do you see that? So, within a year, a woman can conceive and have children, and have a child, rather, or children. It can, be, it can be twins or triplet. You understand? Glory to God. But God will not microwave pregnancy for you. You understand what I mean? You will not microwave pregnancy. Except you want to have premature, which will give you more problems. Praise the Lord. I hope you got that one clear. So there are certain things that we ask from God that require natural time. The God will, will not overrule time. Okay, I'll give you an example. A practical example. Amen. I, I, I wanted to get married at the age of 27. That was my desire. Between 25 27 was my Prayer. That was when I started praying. I want to get married. Now, I've been praying. God asked a woman for me. Now, if I, at the age of 27, my wife was 19. You understand? Of course, her father will not give her to me. Amen. At that time, Father will not give it to me. So, and I've been praying, God, give me the, a woman, and, I, and God said, don't worry. God told me right from the beginning. He said, don't worry, I'll give you. In fact, the Lord even, uh, by revelation, he described everything about my wife to me, which I wrote down. Yes. You understand? Before I met my wife at all, I wrote them down, which I showed to some of the sisters who were disturbing me. Then uh, you, you fit into the picture. <laughs> I was saying, read it yourself. Do you? Uh, are you? Do you fit into it? You are. You don't fit. When you read it yourself, you know you don't fit. Even physically, the physical description, everything. You don't fit into it. So forget it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Now. I did not get married at the age of 27. I got married at the age of 32. Five years after, five years plus. So that at that time, my wife was, was ready at the age, marriageable age. The father was willing to release her. Amen. Do you, do you get my point? Hello? So there are some things that have to wait for a time and season. You get it? 
Hello? Hello? You, 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 you cannot say you want to become a professor while you are still in primary school, basic school. No, there's a lot of time. Amen. Yeah, you may get double promotion, double, 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 but some way, somehow, something has to follow. Amen. So we must uh, understand that there's time for everything. There is time for what? It's time. Everything has its time. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. You know, Ecclesiastes is before the book of uh, Song of Solomon. And Song of Solomon is before Isaiah. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Look at verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Do you understand? Hello? Do you see Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1? For everything there is what? There is what? Are you there? Okay, everybody, let's read verse 1 together. One, two. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. That is under this heaven, on this planet, there's time for everything. Hello? So, God keeps the law of time. Amen. And that's why if you are a child of God, you must, and you are following the spirit of God, you don't joke with time. Time is, you, 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 there's something called punctuality. God is a punctual God. He follows time. I learned that from, the, from God. You've got to learn punctuality. Amen. Amen. Time. You respect time. God, is, God lives in the realm of eternity, yet he respects time. A law of time. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I hope that is clear. Amen. 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 Even Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, he spent that nine months completing Mary's womb. He did not say because he's the son of God. Yeah. He spent only seven months. We said seven is a perfect number. So he spent seven months. No. He spent that nine months. He complete normal process. You understand? Ah, there's no process. Time, process, natural laws of process. That sometimes cannot be overruled. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How that is clear enough. Now, another factor is a factor. Uh, also, it relates with time. It relates with time. Hello? It relates with what? Time. Time. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, Isaiah 60, you will see something there. Uh, now, I'm talking about promises of God. Specific promises that God gives to you, whether in his word or by prophecy. God gives you a prophecy. Hello? There is a prophetic word given to you by God. Maybe through your pastor or in your own prayers you were praying. God spoke specifically about a particular area of your life. He gave you a promise. Now, I want you to understand that God, God's promises have time attached to them. They have specific time. They obey the law of time. Praise the Lord. If you look at Isaiah chapter 60, I said, look at verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22, that's the last verse. Isaiah 60 verse 22 says, the least one, this is a promise of God, to the nation of Israel. He says, the least one shall become a clan and the smallest one a mighty nation. So this supernatural increase of the population of Israel after their return from uh, exile in Babylon. Now, God was giving them promise that, oh, they will increase them. They will not be small. But he now says, I am the Lord. That's his signature. He said, trust me, I am God. I'm the one speaking. He says, in its what? Time. In its what? Time. Did you see it in your Bible? In its time. That means it has a time. 
this word that I'm speaking to you, this supernatural increase that I'm talking about, has its time. In its time, I will esteem it. When its time comes, I will esteem it. You understand? So then God is a God of time. He's eternal God. But when he wants to work in for mankind, he obeys the law of time. Hello? Are you following? Now, if you look at Abacock, the book of prophet Abacock, you have to travel far almost to the end of the Old Testament before you get to Abacock. Abacock is before the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah is before Agai. Agai is before uh, Zechariah. Zechariah is before uh, Malachi. So you can get it that way. So you start from Malachi, the fourth book. Fourth or fifth book back. Malachi, Zechariah, Agai, Zephaniah, then you see Abacock. Do you get it now? Abacock chapter 2. Most of you use my type of Bible, so it's 891, page 891. Page 891. You can look at, find it by the page. Hello? Are you there now? Chapter 2. Now, from verse 1. And the Lord answered me. Well, let's start from verse 1. I will take my stand at the watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he, that is the Lord, will say to me, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. This man has been complaining about something, actually. Now, verse 12, verse 2. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that he may run that reads it. Verse 3. For still the vision awaits is what? It's appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. That is in your own eyes. It seems slow. It seems very slow. It's like God is too slow. He said, hey, wait. Relax. It will surely come. It will not delay. Hallelujah. Amen. So delay is not denier. That it seems it's nothing is happening. Doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. Or that God has not answered your prayer. There are things that, that ask time. God's own appointed time. Amen. Amen. Hello. Hi. Now, if you look at, for you to understand, um, if you look at um, the book of Galatians, chapter, chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, I want to draw your attention to something in Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Verse 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. I want you to look at how Paul described God's action here. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Look at what he says. He says, but when the fullness of what? Time. The fullness of time. The fullness of time means the time. Pe, pe, pe. That's the meaning. That is, if you say 12 o'clock, God will not come at 11.59. Neither will he come at 12.01. It's 12 o'clock is what? 12 o'clock. He said, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his what? Son. Born of what? Woman. Born under the law. So God also followed the law of time. Hello? The law of time. And the law of natural process. Hello? Are you paying attention? So, he had to wait for the accurate time, the right time, before he sent his son. Glory to God. He had to wait. 
Glory to God. Have somebody listening. So, God waited for the fullness of time. For the right time, perfect time to send his son. Amen. Amen. He had been speaking by the mouth of the prophets. He had been saying it. I'm going to bring the Messiah. Yes. But he waited for the right time. The perfect time. In fact, part of the perfect time was the, the Roman colonization of Israel. Hello? So that what the prophets have spoken concerning the crucifixion of Jesus. Because David prophesied, they pierced my hand, they pierced my feet. And only the Romans were punishing people by crucifixion. The Jews will not do that. You understand? So the perfect time had to come. Glory to God. Are you following? There's law of time. Concerning the promises of what? God. A promise, specific promise of God given to you require time. Sometimes they, 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 you need to wait for their time to come. God will not jump. If you look at um, the book of um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1, you know, very popular one. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1. Are you listening? Hello? When you are <clears throat> believing God for the fulfillment of his promise in your life, you have to be very patient. Amen. Amen. Now, look at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, you know the King James Version put it in a way, he said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully calm, fully calm, that is, when that day of Pentecost now, I don't think Pentecost is about, you know, Pentecostal. Don't think Pentecost refers to Holy Spirit. Pentecost doesn't refer to Holy Spirit. Oh. Pentecost was a festival. Amen? Amen? Just like Passover. Passover was a, you know. So Pentecost took place 50 days. That's why they call it Pente. Pente, 50. 50 days after the Passover comes what? The Pentecost. So they will count 49 days from Passover. So the 58th day is Pentecost. And Pentecost was a festival of what you call in gathering. Pent that is celebration of harvest. You understand? So it was the in gathering or the harvest that they were celebrating. And that was the time that um, the Holy Spirit came. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? So, law of time. Law of what? Time. The apostles could not hasten it. It, did, it. it didn't happen before the day of Pentecost. It didn't happen on the, immediately after Jesus rose from the dead. No, it waited for the, for the right time. The perfect time was when all the Jews in diaspora came to Jerusalem so that the word of God might be fulfilled. You understand now? It's time. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord, did you know he was born? Normally. Hello? People have been praying. Oh, yes. But he did not start his ministry until he was 30 years. He obeyed a long time. He started his ministry at the age of what? 30. Some people say, hey, God promised me. God do this. God said, God sent me. Don't be in a hurry. Relax. Amen. Amen. Pray. Continue to pray. And the Lord will guide you. Amen. Amen. Jesus was praying so that they, until the right time came. He didn't jump in. Jesus obeyed the law of time in every one of his movement. Praise the Lord. As believers, we must learn to... Uh, let me show you. The book of John. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. You know, sometimes in his life, even members of his own families were trying to push him to move at the wrong time. Book of John chapter 7. Gospel according to John chapter 7. Look at it from verse 2. Verse 
Now the Jews' feast of booths was at hand. So his brothers, these are his own brothers, his relatives, said to him, that is, they said to Jesus, leave here and go to Judea, that is, go to the capital. Leave this place, leave Nazareth, leave this area, that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. That is, go on, go, 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 become global, go global now. Everybody see you, you are just in this village. Ah, with this anointing you carry, with this grace you carry, has God not promised that you'll be a global person? Now go now, now. go to the capital so that we can know you. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, that is if truly you are, you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. Come on. Let everybody know you have arrived. Hello? Well, what did Jesus say? In our verse... Five, for not even his brothers believed in him. Do you see that? So don't be shocked if your own relatives don't believe that you are born again yet. Amen? Amen. Now verse 6, Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. That's you people, you always say, no, no, no. Your own is no, no, no. My time has not come. Hello? <laughs> you see? Time. When his mother said in chapter 2, he said, they lack wine. Hey, he said, my time has not yet come. Praise the Lord. So we must understand the principle of time, divine timing. Divine what? Timing. Divine timing. I told you how Apostle Paul and his team wanted to preach in Asia. Huh? And uh, the Holy Spirit did not allow them. Why? Is it that God ate, ate those people? No, there was time. It was not yet time to enter that place. Even though Jesus said, go and preach the gospel to all the world, to all nations, but it was not yet time to enter Asia, to enter Bithynia and Mysia. Praise the Lord. There was an appointed time. So we've got to understand the principle of time when we are dealing with God. Sometimes we want it, na 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 na, today, 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 today. But yeah, there are things that, yeah, by prayer we can make it happen now. Yeah. Healing, the will of God about healing is now. Hello? It's now. Salvation is now. In fact, the only thing that the Bible gives us guarantee of his time as na 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 is salvation. Salvation is the only thing. Look at it. Look at it. Um, is this Second Corinthians now or First Corinthians? Chapter Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse two. Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse two. Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse two says. For he says, in a favorable time, you see, time, I listened to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of what? Salvation. Now. So, as far as salvation is concerned, I was, you're being saved from sin. The time is now. It's never tomorrow. It's never later. Why? Because you never know where you leave this world. And once your, 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 your chapter is closed, your, your eternal destiny is, is set. If you have faith in Christ, you are saved. If you are not born again, hell is sure. Amen. Glory to God. So salvation is what? Now. Now is the accepted time. Now. He didn't say today. Did you notice that he didn't say today is the day of salvation? Did you notice he didn't say today is the day of salvation? So today. Mm -mm. Today is 24 hours. You understand? He said now. Now is the day of salvation. So that one is guaranteed. You can be saved right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes I pray for people right now, and it happens, depending on your faith. But for some, well, 
The miracle did not manifest immediately. It took some, some time, minutes, maybe hours, even some days before it manifested fully. Praise the Lord. But one thing is sure, God answers prayer. Glory to God. I, I hope that is clear enough. Hello? It's law of time. God will not overrule it. You, 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 no. Now, now the third factor which I want to call our attention to because of our time is demonic activities. Yeah, demonic activity. Sometimes delay in manifestation of answer to our prayer is the result of demonic activity. It has nothing to do with God. It's demonic. Hello? For example, you, of course, the popular one, um, uh, Daniel, you remember Daniel? How he prayed and fasted 21 days. And when the angel came, that's Daniel chapter 10. You remember? Um, and the angel said, hey, from the first day, that's from verse 12, from the first day that you set your heart on this matter and you pray, said right, right that, that very moment, he said, your voice was heard in heaven, and I was dispatched. He said, but the prince of Persia waylaid me. Hello? He was the one who waylaid me. And I stayed with him for 21 days until Michael, one of the princes of God, came and delivered, delivered me from him. Praise the Lord. So in that case, it was not God. Hello? It was what? Demonic activity. It was not the issue of time now. It was demonic activity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Demonic activity can cause delay in manifestation of the answer to prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I, I remember the testimony given by uh, Reverend Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack, you know, he said a friend of his had been wanting to sell his house so that he could buy another house in town, another part of the town. So he wanted to sell his own. It's like when you want to sell your phone so that you can buy another one. Uh -huh. So he wanted to sell his house so that he could buy another house. So he put for sale on it. And he prayed and said, Lord, I want this house sold by so so time so that I can. Because the other house too, there's time on it. And he trusted God. But nobody came to buy the house. And he kept praying. He kept praying. He kept praying until one day the Lord told him, because he was really shocked that, ah, God doesn't feel. How come? What's happening? Then the Lord told him what to do. He should, the prayer point is you pray. How he should pray. To arrest all demonic activity on the person that is to buy his own house. The Lord told him, pray and arrest demonic attack on the finances of the person that is coming to buy your house. So after he prayed that prayer, the person came and bought the house. And the person told him, I would have bought this house at so-so time. Almost immediately I saw it at so-so time. I wanted to buy, but something happened to my finances. But everything just said now. That's why I quickly came. You see? That's demonic what? Activity. Praise the Lord. Like I told you the case of some women who wanted children. They, want, they, they wanted a baby. And yet they could not conceive for a long time. They were always having a, uh, you know, abortion of their babies and things like that, of the pregnancy. That's not the will of God. That's not God. That's not God's activity. That's demonic. And so, we took authority over it. And today they are mothers of their own children. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Uh, the, you know, I've told you the case of my own landlord, whose promotion was delayed for over 10 years, about 13 years. No promotion, nothing. He was struggling, 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 doing everything he knew, but promotion wasn't coming. But when we met, I prayed for him, I rebuked the powers, and uh, two months after the prayer, he was promoted. What didn't happen for 13 years happened two months, within two months. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the power. So there are demonic activities also involved in this matter. 
Do you understand now? Now, let me, because of my time, let me quickly go to fourth one. Man's own ignorance. Sometimes it's man's ignorance, idleness, amen, and foolishness. Hello? Imagine somebody who is praying, God, I want to have my baby between this year, you know, I want to have my, you know, within one year, the other man of God prophesied, there's a prophetic word over that person, I said, yes, you are going to have your baby in one year time. My brother, they say you are going to have baby in one year time. Now, six months, sister, you did quarrel with your husband. Six months, you did quarrel. You don't meet him sexually. Oh, you want to become Mary number two? <laughs> huh? How would the prophecy be fulfilled? Ah, if you want to have a child, you believe in God for a child. Immediately after man of God pray for you. If you are living in America, you better come back to Ghana. I meet your husband. Or try to go and meet him in a crowd wherever he is. I make sure you, you do the normal thing. Then you can expect the prophecy to be fulfilled. But you now, you, God, the, the prophecy had come, God has spoken, oh, you are going to have, and you, you lock up. This, that prophecy, now you, now you cause the delay, now your own foolishness, they cause the delay. You've got to repent. You understand? Hello? Oh, you see, sometimes our own foolishness. Oh, this one can't, you reject him. That one, you reject it. When will you get married? Oh, this lady come. Mm. It's, it's, it's too short. It's too tall. It's too slim. It's too, in the back, I say, no good. Uh, 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 ah. Always complaining. When will you marry? You go tell. You. This one is not that God. Is. No, it's you. Amen. Sometimes our own foolishness, our own ignorance. We don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. So, because we don't know what to do or we are not active enough. Amen. We are lazy. Maybe lazy as a student. You are lazy to study. You, you spend all your time watching TV, playing games. You don't really get serious. You are not serious with your books. Then, you are setting prophecy of sponsorship to happen or something to happen. Oh, no, how can it happen? You need, you need to put yourself to hard work. Amen. Then you see the answer manifest. Glory to God. Amen. But what I want us to understand is this. Whatever the kind of uh, force. This is not everything, but I just want to highlight this for. But whatever kind, listen, Portrait, because this is where I'm going. All that one is just, by the way. Now, where I'm going is this. Whatever kind of delay, whatever kind of factor may be responsible for the delay in the manifestation of the answer to your prayer, that is the, the, the manifestation of what you desire from God, whatever at all, when that is from God's timing or demonic activity or whatever. There's this one Bible solution. One thing that the Bible gives us as solution. And that's what I want us to see tonight. Amen. Are you ready? Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Chapter 6 rather. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I read verse 12. Well, let me start from verse 11. From verse 11 to verse 15. Hebrews chapter 6. From verse 11 to verse 16. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end so that you may not become sluggish. So that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit their promises. Did you hear that? Who through what? Faith and what? 
Faith and what? Faith and patience. Now, the word for patience there is the word macrotumia. That's the Greek word translated to patience. That is macrotumia. Macrotumia. Now, it means to be long suffering, to suffer long, to, to, to endure something. Hello? To forbear, forbearance. Are you listening? It's about endurance, patience. That is, you 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 endure adversity, mockery, shame, without complaining. That's the key word. Without what? Without complaining. So the Bible is telling us, hey, you must maintain. That earnestness of hope, that assurance of hope. What is that hope? The hope is that I know that God heard me and I know my answer is coming. I know that I have received it and I know that I will have it. Hello? So, what do you do? You keep hope alive. Praise the Lord. Faith and patience. Faith and what? Patience. Then you inherit the promise. That is, you see the manifestation. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13. For when God, now he gave us example. Say, for when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, surely I will bless you and multiply you. Verse 15. Everybody, let's read verse 15 together. And thus Abraham, having patiently, what? Obtain the... So he patiently what? He patiently. Is that not what David said in Psalm 40 verse 1? I patiently waited for the Lord. So having patiently waited, he obtained a promise. He saw the answer. Praise the Lord. So during that waiting time, what was Abraham doing? He was enduring mockery. People were mocking him. Hello? You call yourself Abraham. But yeah, you don't get picking. Not even one. Huh? And you are calling yourself Abraham. See, all that, he was, and that is patience. That is what? That's the meaning of that word macrotumia in Greek. It means to, for, to bear something. It's not the patience the Bible is saying here. It's not about stand, standing like this. I say I, I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No, oh. mm. I do like that. No, it's about enduring something. It's about endurance, bearing something. Why you are waiting? Are you are you paying attention? Because some people say, eh, people do oh, what is mocking me. Eh. God, when will you do this thing? God. And they will not pray again. They stop praying. They start crying and weeping and murmuring and complaining. And of course, you know that murmuring and complaining is not the same thing as prayer. What the Bible says here is by faith in God's integrity, his faithfulness that he... You believe that he has heard you. Don't you believe? The Bible says, between two immutable things, God, God cannot change. That's what Abraham believed, that God cannot change. God cannot lie, and God cannot change. God doesn't tell lie. If he says he has done it, believe that he has done it. Hello? He may not manifest yet. He may not have manifested immediately, but you believe that he has done it. Whether it's the devil behind it, or some demon, or some whatever, or time, just keep on what? Praying. Maintain your prayer life. Keep praying. Hello? Keep praying with an attitude of what? Patience. Attitude of faith and patience. Now, go to Hebrews, that same Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I read from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35, it says, Therefore, 
Do not throw away your confidence. Don't throw away your confidence. The confidence you had when you started your prayer. When you prayed and you believed that, oh, God had me. That confidence, don't throw it away because nothing seems to have changed. Don't throw it away. Hello? He said, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. That is that there's a great reward. Your faith, your faith will be rewarded. Verse 36. For you have need of what? You have need of what? Hello, are you there in your Bible? You have need of what? You have need of endurance. You have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. When you have done, you have done the will of God. You have done what God told you to do. Hey! Sometimes it may not happen immediately. It may not manifest immediately. But you have done the will of God. He said you need endurance. You need what? Yeah. Endurance. People will mock you while you are waiting. That's, now, the word endurance here is the word uh, upomone. That's the Greek word. I checked it up and it means constancy. Constance. Being constant. Hello? It is about fortitude. You stay, you stay there. Hello? You stay. You are patiently enduring. Now, but there is an attitude about this particular word. It carries an attitude. The attitude is this. Cheerful. Cheerful or hopeful endurance. Cheerful or what? Hopeful what? Endurance. Which means, while you are waiting, you need an attitude of what? Cheerfulness. Joy. Hopeful. The Bible says rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in what? You rejoice. When you are open, you are expecting something. You are rejoicing. Even before it manifests, you are rejoicing. That's what Anna had. After she prayed at Shiloh, she believed God had earth. And she started what? Rejoicing in hope. Was she pregnant immediately? The man of God spoke? No. Was she pregnant that same month? No. If you read your Bible very well, the Bible says in the process of time. In the process of what? Time. She conceived. Hallelujah. Amen. Is somebody paying attention? Yes. But while she was waiting, from the moment the man of God said, The Lord, the God of Israel, grant your petition, which you have asked of him. From that very moment, the Bible says she stopped being sad and she went to eat. Is that not so? She stopped complaining. She stopped being moody. She started rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, that is that is patience. Waiting for the baby to come. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is very important. As a child of God, you must understand the importance of staying in prayer. You stay in prayer. Don't say, hey, I prayed. Job, oh, job, oh, nothing is happening. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Jesus said in Luke chapter, you know, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. You keep praying. You don't stop praying. Now, your prayer is not the prayer. After you are praying, you are not praying and, call, and, 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 you know, like some people say, I want to bombard the gate of heaven. You are not, bombard, you are not breaking the gate of heaven. This is a prayer of faith. Don't forget faith and patience. You have asked God and God said he has said. So, you are praying. Your prayer now is a prayer of declaration of your confidence in God. Father, I thank you. Because I know that this thing is done. I know you have, you have given me this and I know that it will surely manifest. Hello? Just, are you praying? Are you are praying? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Especially praying in the Holy Spirit about that issue. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You see, it is as you stay in prayer, listen very well to this stage now, it is as you remain in prayer, you are consistent, you are constant in prayer about that matter, praying, praying,
crying, worshipping the Lord and praying on that issue, it is in your place of prayer that you will receive instruction. Pay attention very well. You will receive what? You will receive divine instructions. Directions. Revelation. That will bring about the manifestation. When you do what? Obey that instruction or you follow the instruction. Like I told you, the friend of uh, uh, Reverend Andrew Womack, he had been praying. There was a devil blocking the person that would buy his house, but he kept praying. He kept. He didn't give up praying. He didn't give up and said, ah, I'm tired. Maybe it's not the will of God. I'm tired. No. He continued praying. It was in the place of prayer, constancy in prayer, that the Lord now gave him the prayer point. Say, pray like this. And when you pray like that, then the solution comes. But if you give up praying, then you have given up your answer. You hear what I say? When you give up praying, you give up what? And that's what the devil wants you to do. The devil keeps take look at what is happening. Nothing is changing. Look at you. Look at you. You are getting older. You are not getting any younger. Look at it. Look at this. Look at that. The devil wants you to give up. Or to find alternative. Like Sarah. Who decided to find alternative for her husband, Abraham? You know the story now. And that's how Ishmael came about. You remember? Don't be like that. Hello? Don't be like that. Keep your eye on God's faithfulness. Keep your eye on what? God's faithfulness. God is faithful. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You, so, as you are praying, you are waiting for God. Don't just wait, murmuring and complaining. Just, or I do. Lazy. You are not praying. I'm tired. I'm tired. Or you are murmuring and complaining. Ah, when will this thing happen now? Ah, ah, what's going on? I don't even know whether it's the will of God. I don't even know whether it's Satan. I don't even know. How will you know? Keep on praying. Keep on what? Praying. Keep on praying. It's in that place of prayer that instructions will come that you, that you need to follow and that will bring about the manifestation of that answer. Amen. Are you listening? Sometimes God, like what Abacob said in Abacob chapter 2, he said he stood on the side on his post, watching the answer that God would give him. Now, what God told him, do you know there are some things, it's in the place of prayer God will let you know it's not yet time. It's not yet, it's not yet time. It's not yet time. Wait a little more. Just wait a little more. It's not yet time. Don't move yet. It's not yet time. Glory to God. And sometimes, it's in the place of prayer that God will help you, will tell you, oh, it's time, come on, move. Amen. So, but if you give up praying, you'll miss your answer. Glory to God. I hope somebody got something tonight. Let's go back to the book of Psalms so that we round up. We started with the book of Psalms. Uh, let's round up with Psalm. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, glory. Psalm 42, quickly. I'm going to read Psalm 42. Listen very well. Pay attention. Psalm 42. Um, this, was, this is not a psalm of David, actually. It was, it's written by one of the sons of Korah. It says, as a deer pants for the flowing stream, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? You see now, people were mocking this guy. Say, where is your God? This God you have been talking about. Say, God will do it. I remember those days when I was praying about marriage. Hey, my own sister, our last baby, eh, got married. Before me. Oh, I tell you, my own, my sister, our youngest, the last born, she got married before me. And the day she was getting wedded, that very day, hey, come and see. Oh, the, the, 
They now play we call the Obenile, all those <laughs> the women of the house. They now began to say, Pastor, come. <laughs> Uh, all these sisters that are passing, show us your wife now. Honestly, properly, they ask me. Say, show us uh, all these fine, fine girls. You don't get anyone. I say, don't worry, I'll show you. <laughs> you see, very embarrassing thing. Hello? Imagine if your own mother, your father call you, say, friend, say come here. <laughs> Is anything wrong? <laughs> because they expect you to, to get married. They are waiting. Amen. So where is your God? Now, look at it. These things I remember as I pour out my soul. You see, he did not stop pouring out his soul. He kept praying. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Now, this guy is encouraging himself. See, it's not, it's not complaining, it's moment. He said, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are, you, why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now this guy, he said, come on, my soul, why are you cast down within me? Come on, hope in God, everything will be fine. Amen. That is patience. He patiently waited, looking up to God, trusting God. Hallelujah. He yes. said in verse 6, And my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of the em and of Ammon from Mount Misa. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and all your waves have gone over me. Verse 8. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me. You see, his song is with me. That is, I'm singing. I'm singing praise to God. A prayer to the God of my life. In the night, I pray, not weeping and, and crying. No. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do, you, why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? Verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Open God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. That's the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the spirit of what? That's the spirit of faith. Faith bears hope in us. Glory to God. You don't listen to what people are saying. You don't listen to what you are saying, what is happening around you. You keep your eye on God's word and you keep praying. Keep praying and trusting God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if it's the devil, you will weary him with your patience. Amen. Amen. You will do what? You will weary him. You remember Jesus gave us the parable of the widow. Who was going to a judge? Say, avenge me of my enemies. And the Bible said the judge will not answer her for a long time. But she kept going. She kept going. Avenge me of my enemies. Ah, oh, come on. Get justice for me against my enemies. The man said, the man said, I know they fear God. If you beg him with God, you know they hear. Beg him with man, you know they hear. Very stubborn judge. He said, but one day, eh, the man got tired. He said, ah, even if I don't fear God and I don't respect any man. Let this woman weary me with her coming. Let me answer her. Oh, what? Keep praying. He said, yeah, Jesus said, hear yeah, what the unjust judge says. He said, will God, huh? will God not answer his own saints who call upon him day and night? Hey. He said, but he said, he will answer them. Though it may, it may, it may take some time, but he will surely answer them. Glory to God. Yeah. So don't give up. The devil wants you to give up. Then once you say, hey, it's finished. Careful. Nothing is happening. Nothing has changed. Nothing will ever change. Ah, this thing, maybe it's not the will of God for me, crap. Maybe blah, blah. No, who told you? Did God himself tell you it's not his will? Keep praying. It's in the place of prayer you will know. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether it's the will of God or not. In the place of keep praying and listening. Keep praying and listening. You will hear his direction. You will hear his instruction. Then you take step. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you see the answer manifest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Are we blessed tonight? Are we blessed tonight? Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. And don't try to don't try to work it out in your own way. Don't try it. The devil will want you to do it in your own way. Do you remember Joseph? Hello? Joseph in prison. Do you know he had the, the, the butler? He, he had the butler. He said, butler, when you get to, when everything gets fine for you, remember me. Oh. But the man forgot him for how many years? Two years. Two years. The man forgot him. But when the fullness of time came, when the fullness of time, whether it was the devil who made the man to forget him, or whether it was the human wickedness, whatever, Joseph did not stop believing. Joseph did not stop praying. When the fullness of time came, the Bible said the king, the king sent and released him. And he became the prime minister. In fulfillment of the vision, the word of God, which he has seen at the age of 17. At the age of 17, he saw the vision. But he became, what God said, he, he will become in that vision at the age of 30. So for 13 years, he was in suffering. Waiting. But he was, and you know, he was not murmuring and complaining. Because if he were the murmuring and complaining type, if he was the murmuring and complaining type, how would he have seen those two men, servants of Pharaoh? Because if everybody is doing his own crying, will you mind the other person? No. He was always joyful. Hey, what's happening? Hey, why are you not happy? You people are looking sad. Hey, come on. What's happening? Ah, it was in the process of helping other people that now God brought solution to his own. So while you are waiting, keep working. Keep what? Keep working. Keep praying. Keep helping people. Keep blessing the brethren. Keep serving the Lord. Don't give up coming to church. Don't say, hey, I'm not coming to church again. God is not doing anything. The prayer is not getting answered. You are, what you are doing for the Lord, don't give it up. Keep serving. And then you see the answer will manifest. Let's be on our feet tonight. Is somebody blessed tonight? Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Spirit. 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 Pray. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray it in. Pray it in. Pray it in. In the name of Jesus. Pray it in. In the name of Jesus. Pray it in. Le boca passe que librante, yebra les que peto libreina, yebra mo coposuto blahane, yebra que tazo toblia, yebra casa ze coto libre que te, le manda canos que yebro va casate, yerege de golodo, que tira brate, elena va capasoto libre que te, yero to que que te lo no coto libre que te, rana mo catala broto que te, men rolo crate coto, yebra la mande le brodia, yebro va capas Tole brekete tole brekete, ebrana katalo brahane, ebara da kayote keto, ebramo gabaria mane, ebrogo koso le brakete le brogo na katila ba, aga yaga yegedo koto la brekete. Keep on praying, keep on praying, don't give up praying, don't be lazy in prayer. Don't give up prayer, don't give up prayer. Don't give up prayer. Don't give up prayer. Don't give up prayer. Don't stop praying. Don't be discouraged. Don't let this seeming delay discourage you. The Bible said the vision is for an appointed time. Though it seems slow, if it seems slow, wait for it. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will surely come. It will not delay. Le magaba zekito zoli brahana de la gezo zo brakaketo libre ina mengro boko sole brakete ye bagazeko na braketo zia la bari regolo brahana kapalo libre gira ye pakapato ke koto libre ye rados ke to libre gira brahate ye bali grande ye proboko sole brakete ye brama proboko sete koso zo ala ne koto ne brahane ye prakata libre ona ye koso zo brana ye gezeko libre rageto bradeko in brande krasi mlengo soto bra I refuse to be weary. I refuse to be sluggish. I refuse to be impatient. I refuse to be impatient. 
I refuse to be in a hurry. I refuse to be in a haste. I receive the word of God. I judge God as faithful. I believe God is faithful. He keeps his promises. He never lies. His word is settled in heaven. What he said, he will do. What he said, he will do. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. I know he ate me. And I know that I will have my hands.